Let's take our Bibles and turn to um, 1 Samuel. We'll get there in a couple minutes. And um, before we get into the lesson, I just want to mention, we just took the Sunday School offering. And um, you see on the handout that the June through August offerings are going toward our Academy Scholarship Fund. And through last week, we had uh, taken up $742. We took up this morning's offering, and we have two more weeks to give. And um, I think we can. Um, it would be nice if we could break the $1,000 mark there. If you think June, July, and halfway through August, we got $740. Um, that would be a good thing to get $1,000 there to help the Academy Scholarship Fund. We have um, well over 10 students in the Learning Center and other students that were in the Learning Center last year that now are in traditional schooling. So uh, it's a really uh, exciting thing to see um, that happen. Last week, well, for last summer and this summer, we've been talking about separation from the world, standards of separation from the world, and we covered a lot of different topics related to that. We've talked about alcohol and what the Bible has to say about wine. We talked about our appearance, whether it's a, a b being distinctive in our dress or modest in appearance. Um, we talked about, uh, Pastor Darren talked about gambling for a week last summer. I remember that. And... Um, and I have a cold and I can't think very straight right now. <laughs> My brain is uh, kind of just not working. But I know last week we talked about music. I remember that much. Um, and so um, I would like to know, now this is the scary part for a teacher. I would like to know what you remember, some, just not everything, just something. The, the first thing that comes to your mind from last week's lesson, if you were here last week, um, something Let's just see a few things that, uh, that people have to say. Just one thing that comes to your mind from last week's lesson. Let's get Mrs. Souza. Music is emotional. All right. How, how did you come, why, how, did, how did I get that across to you? The beat of it. The beat of it. Oh, okay. Okay, right, when we talked about funeral music or whatever, okay. Rachel. I'm sorry? Music is not good or bad. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, now she's, she's a college student. Now she's looking in her notes, and hopefully her notes say music is either good or bad. Does it say that? Yes, very good. Okay. So I got scared there for a second. Yeah, what did I, Mr. Brady's up here? He was gone last week, and he's, you know, he's, I learned all this stuff from him, and he's saying, what did you teach? <laughs> wow. Um, Ron, Dean, right. Music is, not neutral. music is not neutral. That's the same as what, what Rachel said, except me, Rachel said it was neutral. So, uh, so uh, Nate. Music in a song is as much Okay, so music in a song is as important as the words themselves. Um, there, in fact, uh, mu there are songs, there is music that doesn't have words with it, and that music communicates to us. Um, I got the opportunity to play with the Chicago Philharmonic last night at a park, at a concert in a park, and there was, there's a lot of different music there. And nobody sang any words, but people in the audience and even people performing experience different types of thoughts, different emotions, different thoughts um, as we played or heard the different types of music that, that we had there. So it, music communicates, as a language, it communicates different emotions and when the words and the music are together, if, they, if they're not working together, the music is comes through, the message from the music is more powerful and comes through more than just the words. Anyone else want to say, say something that hasn't been said? Mary. 
Okay, yes, our music is to the Lord. Now that's something that in Pastor Darren's sermons, the two weeks, he emphasized that over and over again. Our music is, uh, we're singing to the Lord. Our music should be, we are playing for God, we're singing to God, we're, music is, is it, and so then, since it is, let's follow that up. Since music is to God or for God, does it matter whether we like it or not? No. It, who, who does it matter? It matters that God likes it, right? So even if, even if, so, so if we're like, I don't like that kind of music, that doesn't matter, okay? Is so long as God likes it. Well, or, you know, some people come to our type, our type of church and um, they say, but the music there, I can't get into it. I can't get into that kind of music. Well, is the music, we're, our music is not for you, it's not for me. It doesn't matter whether I can get into it or not. It matters whether God is pleased by it or not. And um, something I, I, I mentioned last week, and I, and I know this from experience on a couple different topics, not even just music, is the more you um, get to know something, the more you can enjoy it, the more you like it. Um, I think there are probably some things like shellfish that I will never get, I will never get to know well enough to like. I'll just make sure of that. <laughs> but, all right, um, one more if there is one. Janice. Very good. We talked, we, 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 we talked about then the primary verse we looked at last week was um, 1 John 2, 15, 16, 17, where the, the world system, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, is kind of defined, or it's described at least by those three um, phrases after that, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are the things of the world. And so music that, that communicates those things is worldly music, and we're not to love those things. Love not those things, and music can communicate those things. And I said, and I said that the lust of the flesh seems to um, be the sensual uh, types of things, the, um, and there's a lot of music that is sensual. We know that. Uh, some, of the, some of the, just the genres, they would call it, or the types of music, the what they call that music. Rock and roll is a term for sensuality, um, even more than that. Um, and then there's the lust, uh, the lust of the eyes seems to be the idea of covetousness and, and materialism. And we have lots of music that just talks about things, getting things, having things, and all of that type of thing. And then the pride of life is um, pride. Pride is self. And uh, that's rebellion against God. Pride is rebellion against God. And all kinds of music is, all kinds of the world's music is rebellion it is. It promotes rebellion. It's written. It's written in a in a way that breaks all the rules, if you want to call it that. Um, uh, if you're a music theorician or whatever they call that. But either way, we have music. If music, if the music communicates rebellion, materialism, sensuality, it's worldly, and we, for sure, shouldn't use that as an offering to God. But. First John 2 isn't really talking, isn't necessarily limiting itself to offerings to God. It's talking about our whole life. We should not have that worldly influence. We should not love those, that, that worldly music in our lives. So, and, and basically our theme, I hope, our controlling theme for last week was that music is a language. Um, this week, it's going to be, I think, and I hope it's not too much, but a little more technical, just a little. Um, we're going to talk about certain el the elements of music and how they relate to us as people. Um, let's look in First Samuel, chapter sixteen.
And in 1 Samuel chapter 16, um, Saul is the king of Israel. And remember, Saul had been, the people wanted a king, and so Samuel anointed Saul. God told him he was the one, but actually who God wanted to give to Israel was David. So Saul is kind of the people's choice. And he does some good things, but he's more of a self-made man. He does his own thing. When it's time, he knows he's got to offer a sacrifice, but he, since Samuel wasn't there when he thought he had to be there, he goes ahead and does the job of a priest, and, and he does his own thing. He's back and forth all over the place. Once we get to an end, then at, at a certain point in his life, Samuel told him that God had taken his hand off of him, that he'd removed the spirit from him. And then after that time, an evil spirit would come upon Saul. And he would, we don't know exactly everything, um, how this evil spirit affected him. But um, some of his, some of his uh, helpers thought, if we could get somebody to play some music for you whenever you're all, whenever you got this evil spirit on you, maybe it would help. And so who do they find? They found David, uh, the son of Jesse, and, Je and David went and played his music for him. And so that's just the, the quick story. And we come all the way to verse 23. 1 Samuel 16, verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, so his evil spirit came upon Saul, that David took a harp and played with his hand. So David took a harp and played music. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Those three words describe different aspects of Saul's person. He was refreshed, um, speaks of his, his, of his his um, emotions or his intellect, his mind. He was well, refers to his physical makeup, and the spirit departed from him. Of course, spirit is, um, connects to, uh, affects to with his spirit or his spiritual um, makeup. So, this verse here is not a verse um, saying play good music or bad music or anything like that. But the Bible describes, and the Bible's always right, so the Bible describes that music affects us in three ways. It affects us mentally, or we might say mentally, emotionally, um, physically, and spiritually. So, um, I want to then tell you a little bit about music. Um, Music, and this is where it's going to get a little technical, but most of you should, should know most of these terms. Music has three parts to it. Now, obviously, there's a whole lot more than three parts, because if it was just three, all of us could learn those three, and we'd be great musicians, right? Okay, it's more complicated than that. So I'm going to speak in general terms, but general terms are generally true. They're true. So music has three parts to it. It has the melody... Everybody knows what the melody is. It's not the it's not Clinton Rebecca's daughter, melody, uh, melody. That's if melody is the um, is the part of the music that carries the message. We would say it's the top line. It's the normally, uh, it's the late the top the high part the ladies line. It's the it's what you remember when I say. Um, Jesus loves me. No one sits out there and starts humming, humming the bass line or the harmony. They, you start saying, da, 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 right? That's Jesus loves me. That's the melody. That's the part of the song that carries the message. Then um, there's a part of the song called harmony. And I'm sure there's somebody that we know called harmony too. And, but the harmony is... And um, if I was accomplished enough, I could go to a keyboard. But you see people playing on the, on the piano. They're not hitting just one note at a time, are they? Okay. They, they're hitting several notes at a time, and yet they're playing all those different notes, and it fits together. That's harmony. It fills in, um, and it makes the music much nicer, really, even, to listen to. And then there's rhythm. Some people would, would, would call it beat. Um, all music has a beat. All music has rhythm. Um, in fact, if you don't have 
rhythm, you don't have music. You can't, you can't have music without having rhythm. But there's rhythm, and that is what we might say drives the song. It's the, um, it's the thing that takes you from the beginning of the song to the end of the song. Now, um, I'm going to do a short demonstration here. And I'm going to show you why you must have rhythm. And this might not be real effective to you, but I'm going to play um, eight notes here. I'm sorry, I did the wrong ones there. My memory is going. All right, so there actually was rhythm there, but it was kind of all the same, wasn't it? Could you imagine if every song we had, every note was exactly the same length and exactly the same distance from it? It would, you know, it would. We wouldn't call that music. But if we put just, we just change the, the amount of time that we give to notes, we make some notes longer, some notes shorter, we have something like this. Right. Very simple, that's just, a, that's just a scale going from the top note to the bottom note. But we, we change the timing and all of a sudden it's Christmas, four months early. Um, so, so I, I say that just to point out that I'm not preaching against rhythm, okay? We have to have rhythm. You have to have beats. You have to count your beats and, and, and all of that. It, 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 you cannot have music without rhythm. You can't have music. Well, um, you, you can have music that does, and you, I just played music and there was no harmony in that necessarily. Um, if we got super technical, the instrument you can actually hear other notes in there because of the, the material of the instrument and the timing and all whatever. But pretty much a melody and rhythm and then harmony adds. So this is, I'm gonna tell you something that anybody that wants to listen to rock music is gonna mock, okay? Scoffers mock, uh, unbelievers scoff. People that don't want to obey God will scoff. I've seen the scoffing. But if you sit there and listen and, you're, and you take your scoffer off, or if you just don't have one, you'll say, you know what, that's true. Okay? So the melody of music relates to our spirit. Okay? It relates to our spirit. There's no, I mean, God didn't say this. God didn't write a verse of scripture that says melody relates to, to, to spirit. But God didn't, I mean, there's a lot of things that we see that God created that we understand is true that's not in scripture. God created it that way. God created music. Music in the melody relates to our spirit. Um, what, and the easy one, what part do you think relates to our body? The rhythm, okay? Our bodies have rhythms, don't they? We, um... The most well-known rhythm it, in all the world um, is a march rhythm, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, at last night at the, at the concert, the um, music director did something with the audience, and he said, you know, why, why, does, why is that march rhythm, why, do, why does the march rhythm have two beats? Because we have... Two legs, right? One, two, one, two. And then, then it was kind of funny. He said, and that's why uh, a waltz rhythm has three beats, because you, you have three legs when you're trying to waltz. <laughs> but, uh, so, but one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, so the rhythm, and that's just very simply, the rhythm is associated with or connects or speaks to, in a, in a real sense, our bodies. Now, again, and I'm, maybe I shouldn't qualify what I'm saying so much, obviously, you have to have rhythm in the melody for it to speak to you, because when I did that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you thought, wow, he's practicing. And then when I put some rhythm in there, you thought, oh, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Okay, so rhythm is necessary for the melody, but 
The melody primarily speaks to our, our spirit, to our soul, to us. The rhythm primarily relates and speaks to our bodies, to our physical part. And the harmony is left for our minds. Um, you, there's a lot of different ways, and, and, and these, are not, these are not proof. These are like anecdotal statements. But you got to have a brain to be able to play more than one note at a time. I mean, you got to have a brain to play one note at a time. But if you're going to add more notes in there, it takes mind. It takes mental work. Um, it takes mental work to build music like that. I, I can't just say, well, let's play this note and this note and this note and this note. If I just put up, if I just got up there and smashed my hand on the, on the keyboard, that doesn't sound very good. But if I put the right ones down at the right times, then it sounds good. How do I know to do that? I have to study. I have to learn principles of music. I have to study the physics of the music and, and all of that kind of stuff. So the harmony, um, it, to perform it. How many of you have ever heard a barbershop quartet? They had all those tight harmonies. It takes work, it takes mental work, it takes concentration to get yourself right there in the right spot. Even, even if it's not a bar, if it's just a men's quartet, okay? I have the easy part. I almost always sing the melody, so I can just sing as loud as I want to. That's a joke. But I do sing pretty loud, I guess. Um, but the other guys, Mr. Bollinger, he, has, he can't just sing what he wants to. He has to figure out. He has to use his mind more. He has to work mentally more to hit those other notes. It all fits together. So the harmony, in that sense, relates to us on a mental or intellectual level. Especially in church, what's most important? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. How many of you have seen advertisements in the newspaper or on the billboards where come to our church and experience God? We don't come to church to experience God. They're not experiencing God, but what is experience is Physical, And that's why you go to that church, and it looks a lot different than a church. And the music does what? It moves you. You're, 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 it's pounding rhythm. You are experien experiencing something. It's not God, but, but it's, it's just manipulated in a certain way that people think it's God. They feel something. They experience something. And that's not what God wants. In fact, that's not how we worship God. We don't worship God by experiencing something. In fact, we don't experience God. Uh, most of us do not want to experience God. There's only been a few people in all the, all the world that ever experienced God. Moses experienced God, right? And God put him in the cleft of the rock and only let him see his hind parts. And he was, it was terrible. I mean, he asked for it. And I don't think he, you know, I don't think he said, well, I never, you know, I wish that never happened to me, but... It was, it was hard. It was not something that we all want to do. In fact, he had experienced God. He came down to see the people of God, and they said, put a veil over your face because it's too much. All right? So we're to worship God in spirit and in truth. We're not to experience God. So some principles. Since music is this way, and I haven't had the time to just go through it all the way, but I think I've done enough because the truth is, if, you're, if you don't want to know, you don't believe me. If you do want to know, it makes sense, even though there might be a question here or there, or what about this or what about that. And I can take those on an individual basis, which leads me, to, reminds me, sorry about that, um, we took it off there. It used to have my email address on this sheet here. I would like to have a question answer a class period, the very last, in two weeks. And these can be questions on any subject that we've talked about last summer or this summer. Um, so if you have a question, write it down on a piece, write it down on this and give it to me or send it to my email and we'll compile those. If I have enough questions, we will have a question answer class period. If not, I will just prepare something else. Um, but so, um, but so music, so what is, let's just, so what principles 
what biblical principles can we apply to the idea of to this this three part um, description of music? First, Matthew six thirty three. It's a it's just like pull that out of the tool tool belt whenever you need it. But it's true. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. What is supposed to be first in our lives? Our minds, our bodies, our spirit, God, you know, our spirit, okay? The spiritual is the most important. Um, so that's Matthew 6.33 if you're writing verses down. And there's going to be a lot more. You could kind of just look there and then look around and check a concordance for more. 2 Corinthians 10.5. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says that we're to cast down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. This is, to me, clearly speaking about the intellectual realm, the, me the mental realm, and bring them into the subjection of Jesus Christ. Every thought we have is supposed to be brought in subjection to Christ. So we have Christ at the top, God at the top, spiritual is first, the mental is brought into subjection to Christ. And then our bodies, we know those are to be put under. They're brought to be kept under control. But I put, but I, I put my body under and I keep it under control. I don't allow it to control me. So these spiritual principles that relate to us in, in, in every other area of our life should relate to our music. We should, when we hear music, we should hear a melody. It should be the top part of it. It doesn't have to be a... A song only that we hear at church necessarily, but because the spiritual is first, the melody should dominate. Then the harmony should support, but should be in subjection to the melody. And the rhythm shouldn't dominate. The rhythm shouldn't control. The rhythm has to be under control. So um, when you listen to music, if the first thing you hear is the rhythm, it's out of, it's not, it's not, it's not put together well. For me, um, if the first thing you hear is all these harmonies, it's, uh, it's out of balance to me. You've got to have, and maybe I shouldn't even say to me, we have to have a melody for music to be constructed in the proper way. Now, I haven't said anything about what beats are good or bad, and I don't know all the different beats, but let me ask you something. Can your body do good things and bad things? Yes. Um, what should, you don't want music telling your body to do something that you shouldn't do in public, let's just put it that way, okay? Rock and roll, jazz, and all of that stuff, it's all, it all revolves around sexuality, moving our body, gyrating the body, whatever. Uh, the music, when the music asks your body to do something sensual, you don't want to be doing that in public. Okay? Our, our, that, our sexuality is reserved, it's sacred for our spouse. Okay? It's, not, it's not to be shown off and, and practiced, you know, on stage, in, in a, wherever, okay? So, um, this is not technical. This is just, what is this music asking me to do? If it's like, oh, I like this. I like this, who's the I saying that? Huh? Is it the flesh? Yes, okay. Now, if it's saying, march down the street, is there anything wrong with marching down the street? No. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with relaxing if it's saying relax. There's nothing wrong with relaxing, right? So, just a quick question. What is this music asking my body to do? If you're honestly answer that question, very rarely, there'll be very few times when you see, when you'll be able to second come around to that, this music, ask myself about this question. Uh, let's start that sentence again. I have a song. I, as I listen to it, I say, what is this music asking my body to do? If it's not asking my body to do something wrong, and I start listening to it, very few times am I gonna, am I gonna ask myself again, is this music right or wrong, and say it's wrong? 
okay? There could be some situations there. I would just say, as a standard, and that's what we're talking about, as a standard, this is a little personal, but as a standard, what is this music asking my body to do? Is that something I should be doing publicly or not? And if it's, even if you're in private, if it's asking your body to do something that's only for private or, and you, eh, let's, we're going too far there. But um, what is this music asking my body to do is a good question to ask as a standard for should I listen to this music at all? All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the principles that we can learn from. We thank you that you have um, made yourself plain to us. And we pray that as we seek to serve you and to live for you, that we would be um, sincere. And um, I ask that those that may be here and are struggling with or, or just don't understand everything, that you would... Uh, show them clearly, help them to understand what they should do as they grow in grace in this area of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.